to the top of the 17th and the longest game in championship series history. It's only game one, best two out of three. We are tied at four apiece. Oklahoma coming back up. Beth Moens, Jessica Mendoza, Michelle Smith, oh, Holly Rowe is with us as well. <laughs> Scorecards, I've already. Messy. I'm taping, I've taped where mine, I started. two are together on a one. Yeah, and now I'm folded. And then Smitty, your alarm's going off. My, my, my phone is telling me to go to bed. It's time <laughs> to go to bed. <laughs> I doesn't do that anyway. If you want eight hours of sleep, you better go to bed now. <laughs> awesome. It is just a situation of surviving right now. She, that, that youngster did not did not make it to the 17th. See if they wake her, wake him up for the uh, celebration, depending on which side you're on. It's the best age when you can fall asleep on mom's shoulder. For over five hours, four pitchers have thrown 100 plus pitches. Oklahoma has left the bases loaded in each of the last two innings. It's eight, nine, and then the top. Nicole Mendez, the leadoff, is getting set for her. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth at bat of the evening. Twelfth strikeout for Barnhill, one away. There's the players that have been in the game. 450th pitch of the night is coming up. And we're 5.05. I had an 18 inning game this year, which is the longest in Sunday night baseball history over 30 years. <laughs> now, like less than a month later. So this might be partially my fault, I'm bringing some kind of extra inning mm. mojo. Yep, it's official. We're going to blame Mendoza. <laughs> We're going to make her leave the booth. <laughs> so Mendoza the booth tonight. <laughs> Send her out for funnel cakes <laughs> and <laughs> lock the door, door. behind her. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm good with that. <laughs> That's the problem. Do you you enjoy me? that more. <laughs> I'll gladly sit. Get some funnel cake. Kelsey Arnold looking for her first hit. Barnhill started, left after seven, and then came back in in the 16th. Now that we're back to both starters, the relievers are burnt. Obviously, Florida has Elise, Alicia Acasio. If we had to go, I'm not even going to go there. But she's a third but, uh, <laughs> and, and Mariah Lopez and has Mariah warmed up yes. tonight. On the other side, the freshman for Oklahoma. And Acasio would have to get pulled from third to go warm up. Ouch. Brian Smith behind the plate, taking a hard foul ball. Oh, right in the stomach and on the hand. It knocked the clicker right out of his hand. Look at Barnhill. Immediately felt sorry. Also got his thumb. Which I think is what he's moving around right now. And he's not even moving, barely that thumb. Talk about the fatigue of a game like this on the players. It's also hard on the umpires, mm -hmm. the coaches, the field. The field looks like it's been beaten up pretty good. Ouch. He's in pain. You could tell. Just yeah, he's still taking deep breaths.
It's a 2-2 count on Kelsey Arnold. And another strikeout for Barnhill, number 13. Two down. We mentioned the 41 players that have been in the game. So that means Florida has just two players left, a lefty and a righty, Chronister and Switzer. Oklahoma has the pitcher, Lopez, and then they have three potential batters left in Sparks, Olmos, and Alyssa Dalton. A couple righties and a lefty. That 18 inning game, we had pitchers coming in to hit. Jake Arietta came in for the Cubs. <laughs> they ran, they ran, literally ran out of players. <laughs> Top of the 17th inning in game one of our championship series. Mendez, who had the home run back in the sixth inning. One miles an hour still from Barnhill. Still locating the ball. Doing that rise on different planes, that fastball low in the zone. Two two. Over the head of Ocasio and out into left. And that is Oklahoma's first two out hit in this game. Took them 17 innings to get it. Mendez is gonna get a pitch on the outside and just pound it down, gets it over Ocasio's head. Well, Kaylee Clifton hit a rope in her last at bat, doubled in the 16th inning. It's allowed, that's it, in the 17 innings for the four pitchers tonight. Coming up and in on Kaylee. Base percentage on the year was over 500. She draws a lot of walks. She gets hit by pitches. She can swing it, and there she is with another hit by pitch. Go ahead into scoring position with two down. This looks like a rise ball that Barnhill does not get completely under. It's more like a screwball, just doesn't finish the pitch, rides inside. And Kelly did not want to see Shay Knighton have a chance to swing it here with two on. Chance to be a hero for the sophomore out of Buena Park, California. Grew up playing softball, following her sister MJ around. MJ played collegiately as well. 
Shea picked Oklahoma because of this stage and this opportunity to compete for national championships. The Sooners won it last year with four freshmen and four sophomores. A lot of people thought, oh, they're a year away. This will be the year. Well, they got one last year. Knighton wants to get another one this year. I think Knighton wanted. She was looking for something lower in the zone. You really don't want to get two strikes against Barnhill because she'll come back with that rise out of the zone that we've seen so many hitters chase. But you get few opportunities, something below your chest, below your belt even, to drive. Up in the front of that box. One, two pitch, and Shay Knighton second and left her bat. A three run home run for the Sooners. Barnhill comes right back to the lower part of the body to Shade Nine. You see her front foot open, her lower half explode. Watch her backside get through to this pitch. It's on the inner part of the plate, but the most important part is it's low in the zone. A great shot of her celebrating as you see the ball land out in left field. And Jess, that's a one-two pitch. That's a mistake. Doesn't need to be that close. It needs to be elevated above the letters. Same as the Lorenz pitch that's in right. the bottom of the 10th, a one-two pitch. And you know, this is where the mental fatigue really starts to come in. You yep. see those mistakes by the young pitchers. Grounded to Ocasio. They have come back from a one-run deficit, a two-run deficit. Can they do it? with a three-run deficit. Florida pitchers allowed just seven home runs in 66 games this year. The Sooners have hit three of them tonight. And will this one be the lethal blow? A three-run home run for Shea Knighton in the top of the 17th. And it is a 7-4 lead for Oklahoma. Beth Mowens, Jessica Mendoza, Michelle Smith, Holly Rowe with us as well. Shay Knighton thought she missed her opportunity yeah. and then got another one and jumped all over it. And this is Shay Knighton in Oklahoma City. We forget what she did last year yeah. in the World Series and a big home run to get the lead for Oklahoma. But tonight in the 17th, and I said it, I'm like, that was her pitch. I didn't think Barnhill would come back there, and she did. Knighton made her pay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 26 times the Sooners have struck out tonight, looking for number 27, but that pitch was too close to the zone on a one-two count. You got to elevate that. You got to show away and then come back inside. That was just a mistake of Barnhill. Easy to do when you've thrown this many pitches. It's this late in the game. You could just see it's a rise ball, and it just stays at the belt. You want a one-two rise up at the letters or up at the head. But I'll tell you what, Shay Knighton, oh my goodness, for her to be able to get, she knew it right away. Do you see her throw up her finger? She knew it was out. Big, huge, but I'll tell you one thing, these Florida Gators have responded all night long. That's the money shot as the ball is getting caught in the outfield. Barnhill knew it. As soon as it was hit, she nods her head, knows it's a mistake, but Florida's picking up the bats right now. Knighton comes in, and remember, this is a team that knows how to respond. They've done it all night. That's why we're still here. Three home runs in the season for Kelly Barnhill, two of them tonight by the Sooners. Down a run. They tied it in the bottom of the seventh. Down two runs. They tied it in the bottom of the 12th. 
And for the Sooners, six, seven, and eight coming out of your page, Lauer, you are hammering the zone. You are throwing strikes. You're using your defense. You are pitch to contact. The National Player of the Year, hoping that her teammates can pick her up. Otherwise, Shea Knighton's name will join the ranks of championship series heroes like Sam Finley, Lauren Chamberlain, Megan Langenfeld. Lily Mann did not go around. Mann, Reynoso, and Herndon do up. And a reminder, there are only a couple of bats left for Florida if they wanted to go there here at the bottom of the order. But Lowry couldn't field it. And so just like the seventh and the 12th, a base runner quickly for Florida. Point as a pitcher, this is one you go get, but you need to be able to, you can see she's just gonna try to scoop it. You gotta go down with both hands. She's got one hand, her throwing hand is up in the air. See the way that throwing hand is up in the air? You gotta be down scooping it with both hands. Base hit for man. They thought about the sooner shift and then took it off. So they're traditional in the field. A couple of hits for Sophia, including the game tying hit in the seventh. Kelly Barnhill showing her frustration, probably wanting to take that pitch back but there should not be a pitcher in the game tonight that should be frustrated or hang their head because of the amount of yeah. effort that has been given. Mistakes are gonna happen, and especially 17 innings. Yeah. The perseverance of the four pitchers we've seen tonight is, has been pretty remarkable. And even the flip side, the, the, the mentality of the hitters. <laughs> I mean, when your stats are 1 for 7 or 0 for 7, <laughs> it's hard to keep going up there. Yeah, that's when you don't want the extra in the game. You're like, can we wake up and do this again tomorrow? And we go back to revisit the story of Paige Lowry, who last year was at Missouri, took a line drive off of her face. They weren't sure if she would be able to come back and play again. That's why she's wearing the mask. Frustrated with her situation there, she decided she needed a change of scenery. She wanted to come to Oklahoma to compete for a national championship and be a part of a pitching staff. Her confidence has returned. A little bit of that swag has returned this year. Getting her first start in over a month tonight and now back on in relief. And the Gators just will not go away. Two on with nobody out and the tying run at the plate. And this is just a simple swing. I mean, she really just tries to meet this ball, which is what you do against Paige Lowry. Bounces off the lip. Resilient Gators. Well, and barring a double play here, guys, Amanda Lorenz is gonna hit again. She's due up third. Chelsea Herndon. It, it is amazing to me, the response, because you got to think about this too. Shay Knighton hits that home run. This is a hometown crowd. This place has exploded how many times tonight? Yeah. And the Gators respond every single time, even if it's just getting runners on base. Herndon 
Arnold for one over to first. Not in time. Runners on the corners with one out. Still have the tying run coming to the plate. This ball hit hard at Arnold. Little bit of a bobble, but a nice turn by Clifton, but the speed getting down the line. See the way the Gators, excuse me, the Sooners trying to turn it. Great hustle down the line, though, to make sure that she's not doubled off by Herndon. Justine McLean has a couple of hits. Also reached on a walk. Patty Gasso wants to set the defense. Well, and I think this conversation is not about Justine McLean as far as what to throw to her, how to deal with this. It's more to do with the first and third situation with one out. And granted, they have the lead. It's really making sure that when Amanda Lorenz gets up to bat, you don't provide her with an opportunity to be able to tie this game. And potentially win it. If the bases aren't loaded, I, I wouldn't be, at this point, pitching to Lorenz. I'd make someone else beat me. Give a stat or do it behind her. McLean. Down to their final strike twice. Down ever so briefly after the three run home run here in the top half of the inning from Shea Knighton. But right back on their feet for Florida. She is their most experienced player in terms of NCAA tournament games. Two and one. The power of three with a three run lead. or perhaps a third time comeback for the Florida Gators. Done it in the bottom of the seventh, down one. Bottom of the 12th, down two. And now bottom of the 17th, down three. of singles to lead off the inning and then the fielder's choice for the first out. <laughs> McLean trying to drop one over the top of the bag at third. Just foul. And the ironic part of this game as well is that all of the opportunities that the Gators had to walk off. The yes. number of innings, 10 innings, they've responded and scored only in the innings that the <laughs> Sooners have scored. <laughs> I mean. Yes, yeah, so you give them the credit. Hey, you respond, but then you're also like, okay, so. You could it. have walked off. Yeah, yeah, come on, score one. Left runners in scoring position in both of those innings. Arnold over to first and McLean legs it out. Bases are loaded for Lorenz. And this is what I was saying. You do not want to pitch to Lorenz, obviously, unless you have to with the bases loaded. And that's exactly what the Gators get. They're able to load up the bases. Look at the way McLean is going to pop this down. It's a slow developing play. 
Arnold almost has more of an opportunity to go to second than to first, but look at the speed, the way that McLean is gonna get down the line. What a job by the bottom of the Gators order. Hits from their six, eight, and nine batters. Her last time up, Lorenz hit into a double play. But back in the 12th, it was a two-run double. Jamber. And I'd go right back to that location, but off the plate. Two strikes. Remember, this is where Amanda Lorenz burned them last time. And you look back to the history of extra inning games in this championship series. Megan Langenfeld, Lauren Chamberlain, Emily Carasoni. Well, Amanda Lorenz be one of those names. But with two strikes, Lowry has to give her something that she cannot hit. And that's a great spot. 0-2, and you know what? It was 1-2 when Lorenz yeah, got the hit, yeah. so go back to something similar. I'd go back outside, I'd expand the zone, go out again, it sets up anything if you want to come back underneath the hands. McLean is the tying run at first base. Lorenz out to left. The throw will be into third, a run will score, but they do not allow the runner at second to move up 60 feet. Two down and a two run game. And the sequence against Lorenz are gonna come low and inside for a strike. Back inside again, Lorenz fouls it off. Then they go back outside low. And again, to that outside corner, it's a little bit sweet, but off the end of the bat, of Lorenz induces. They got lucky. Yeah, they got lucky on that. That was a little sweet for a one-two pitch again. An inch, I'd say even a half an inch difference, and that ball's out to left field. And now you've got another dangerous power hitter, 0 for 6, Kaylee Kavistad is due. An out away from a win in game one for the Oklahoma Sooners, but Florida has been here twice already tonight and survived. You win tonight, you got a 75% chance of taking home the trophy. And I think the game ends here. Either this is the last out or Kovastad wins it with a home run. I feel like this is the moment. This is the batter. This is the count. This is everything. Kovastad 0 for 6 tonight. Junior from Lake City, Florida. She hadn't hit a home run since April 28th until she got here to Oklahoma City. She's hit two. against one of the hardest throwers we have ever seen at the Women's College World Series. Paige Lowry hitting in the mid-70s. Third time, they're down to their last strike. And that surprises me. One, two, count. And look at where this pitch is located. I mean, this, this is a, if you want to end the game with a home run, this is the pitch that would have done it, the one that is on the white. Don't give that one to her again or she'll hit it out. Struck her out. Paige Lowry. Ends it 
with the K of Kavistad. And Shay Knighton's three-run home run in the 17th inning wins game one for Oklahoma. What an unbelievable game from both sides. I mean, this was the matchup we predicted from the beginning. The defending national champions, the number one seed, we knew this was gonna be epic. We did not know it would go this late into the night, but they proved these are the two best teams in the country. And we're gonna get to see them again tomorrow night. Shea Knighton hits a home run off the National Player of the Year, and then Paige Lowry ends it with a strikeout. And she comes back underneath the hands at 73 miles an hour, that fastball. And Paige Lowry and Patty Gasso and the rest of the Sooners exhausted, but elated this 17-inning thriller is finally finished. For a young woman who wasn't sure she'd ever play again after an injury last year, she has the Sooners on the brink of a championship. And for Patty Gasso, five and a half hours after deciding to keep her ace in the dugout to start the game, Lowry comes back around to end it. An epic performance from the Gators as well, twice tonight. They rallied to tie the game when they were down to their final strike in our Capital One Cup impact performance night. Well, this is the biggest one of the night, the top of the 17th, to put the hammer in to end the night. Shea Knighton, 3-1 blast. And they're finally able to hold off the Gator bats enough to get the win. Let's go down to the field. Holly is with Shea Knighton. Shay, you told me today, I live for the big moments, perhaps none bigger in OU softball history. What did you see when that ball left Kelly Barnhill's hand? I just saw a pitch that I can hit. Um, it was in the zone, and I knew she was going to attack the zone, so I was just like, just swing. No, nothing bad can happen if you just swing. If you strike out, oh well, there's more game left. And I just wanted to do it for my team. I could hear my teammates, I could hear the fans, the crowd. It was unbelievable, and I just wanted to do it for my Sooners. The moment the ball left your bat, you reacted. Why did you know that was gone? I, I don't know. I just had a feeling. Um, I knew I hit it hard, and I looked up, and I could see that it was going. And I said, oh, my gosh. But it was, it was really cool. How hard was this on a night that time after time the Gators came storming back to keep mentally tough and stay strong in this game? Well, we knew Florida is a great team. They're going to fight. They earned their way here. They deserve to be here. And we just knew we had to fight, and nothing was going to stop us from getting what we wanted. And to play on this stage right now is huge. And for everyone to come up clutch in some type of situation in any way that they could, it helped us a lot, and we got what we wanted. What did you think when Coach Gasso turned the page literally tonight and started Lowry, and then she had to come back and battle like she did tonight? I thought that was huge. Um, the pages work together all the time. They're pretty much like twins. It's kind of weird, but they are a fantastic tag team, and we back any pitcher any day, and we just wanted to play for our team. Last batter, three outs, two strikes. What did you think during that last pitch? Get it done. Any way that we could, anything that we could do to get that last out was what we are going to do, and even if that meant taking one off the chin, we were going to stop that ball and get it out somehow, some way. We'll see you tomorrow night. Yes, we will. Thank you. Once again, our final score, Oklahoma 7, Florida 5. The Sooners win game one. And we are back tomorrow night, or for those of you on the East Coast, we'll see you later tonight. Game two at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Now let's get you to Dodger Stadium for Monday Night Baseball, the Nationals and the Dodgers. Carl Ravage, take it away in L.A.